How do you do? Can a sinner's prayer save you? The answer may surprise you. In fact, the answer surprised three people we're going to hear from today, until their hearts and minds and very lives were unshackled. There are some days you might consider ordinary, and then there are days that change your eternity, or at least your perception of it. This was one of those days, November 21st, 2023. I'm a pastor with a heart for the homeless. My mission field, Skid Row. 10,000 homeless people crammed into 50 city blocks of despair. That day, I spotted a bright orange tent tainted with mud and grit. Hello? Anybody home? Depends. I'm not a cop. I'm a pastor. Pastor? You do me a favor? Anything. Go away. Uh, all right. Uh, but I was hoping to introduce you to a good friend of mine. Someone who can help you. Jesus. How'd you know? <laughs> it's my business to know. I'm Jack, and you're... Annoyed. Listen, my friend. I'm not deaf. Do you struggle with sin? Yep. Would you like to know for certain you're going to heaven? Yep. I'm going to say a prayer, the sinner's prayer, which will declare Jesus your Lord and assure you that you're going to heaven. Just repeat after me, okay? I'm not a parrot, Jack. I'm a human being. I realize that... Do you struggle with sin? Well, yes, of course I do. The Bible says all have... Have sin, right. Would you like to know for certain that you're actually leading people to heaven? Well, I... Because unless you change your ways, you're sending folks to hell with a smile on their face. This is Unshackled, dramatizing true life stories produced in Chicago by Pacific Garden Mission. Ever since our doors first opened in 1877, the mission has been a beacon of hope for the men, women, and children of Chicago's streets. Much has changed in the city since then. More people are homeless now, and they face new struggles that come with a changing world. We've even moved to different buildings over the years, but our foundation in love remains the same. And it is with this mindset that we offer, free of charge, hot nourishing meals, clean clothing, refreshing showers, and a safe bunk for poor and wandering souls to spend the night. Staff members speak to each guest one-on-one -on -one to learn the unique situation that brought them to the mission, while sharing with them the most important aspect of all that they'll experience at the mission. And that is an introduction to the one who sticks closer than a brother, which is what this program celebrates. Now for broadcast around the earth, here is episode number 3,823 in the series Unshackled, the program that makes you face yourself and think. This was a day that would change his life forever. And this day may just change yours as well. Based on true life stories and writings from Denise Wilson's book, Seven Words You Never Want to Hear, we now bring you the surprising discovery of Jack Farthing, right now on Unshackled. I stood in front of that homeless man's orange tent with a chill going through my being. And it wasn't the breeze. Maybe you'd like to know my name. I was just about to ask. Grady. Grady Foster. And you know what, Jack? I'm gonna make your day. I'm gonna do the prayer. Oh, wonderful. This is exciting. Grady, this is going to be the best day of your life. This may be the worst day of yours. Um, okay. Uh, just bow your head, close your eyes, and say... Jack. Huh? I'm happy to do the prayer. Great. Just bow your head, close your eyes... But first, can you please show me where the sinner's prayer is? I don't follow you. Where is the sinner's prayer in the Bible? Can you show me? Well, it's not actually word for word in the Bible, but the principle is there. 
Repent from your sins, believe in your heart, and confess Jesus as your Lord. Repent, you say? Yes. Before I do the prayer, can I tell you a story? Uh, I suppose. So we got a deal then? Deal. This is a true story about three people. Pastor Dave, Charity, and Garrett. Pastor Dave was 52 years old, an evangelical pastor for 27 years, spent his life studying the Bible, memorized 18 books, read through the entire Bible 23 times. This man was committed. That is impressive. More impressive than you realize. There's a fake pass. Jump stop. I've got you. Pump fake. Hook shot. Oh, no. Score! <laughs> you beat me. I don't take it hard now, Foz. You are the coolest pastor I know. That's kind of you. But cool isn't what life is all about. It's about following God's will. No matter where he takes you, Foz. Come on. Let's get some ice cream. I gotta meet with my girl Charity soon. Won't take long. Come on. My treat. All right. Thanks, Pastor Dave. Hey, beautiful girl. How are you? You ready to meet up? Faz, I've been thinking a lot lately. What a coincidence. I've been thinking a lot about you, too. <sighs> Charity, you okay? Faz, you're one of the sweetest, kindest boys I've ever met. Normally, this would be really nice to hear. You're not making this easy. Charity, please don't... I've been wanting to tell you for a couple weeks, trying to work up the courage. But to be fair to you, I need to say it. No, please. You're a wonderful person. You're just not the one for me. So that's it? I want you to know you will always be my friend. I've been doing all the talking. I need to hear from you. I know this is so hard. It breaks my heart, Foz. I'll stop talking now. There's nothing to say. Just thank you for the most beautiful time of my life. Oh, Foz. I gotta go. Goodbye, Charity. What? It's me, Foz. You okay? <sighs> Can I come in? Sure. Hey. I've missed seeing you at church the last couple weeks. What's going on, hmm? I'm sorry. It's been really hard to, to do anything. This is about Charity? How'd you know? Just know that I'm here for you, okay? I remember when my girlfriend broke up with me. Felt like my whole world went dark. But Faz, I want you to remember, there's always hope. Always. Look up. Never forget to look up. God is always there for you. Even more important, he's always here. Right here with us in our pain. Yeah. Thanks. Okay if we pray? Sure. Pastor Dave, come on. Answer. You gotta answer. Oh no. This is my last blog as Pastor Dave. I'm, I'm not, not a, a Christian, Christian anymore. anymore. I'm walking away from the faith. Even though this has been a massive bomb drop in my life, it's been decades in the making. I traveled on speaking teams, I preached to thousands of teenagers at a time, I wrote this blog, I was published, formed curriculum, taught workshops. The whole time, I was hoping at some point it would click and become true for me. It never did. Pastor Dave, how could you? Found out later Pastor Dave was sleeping with a married woman at the church. Whoa. Yeah. He never repented. He totally renounced the faith. Soon after our church split between those loyal to Pastor Dave and those calling for change in the way things worked. Brutal. Lots of carnage. That's awful. I am sorry, Grady. I can see now why you're reticent to say the sinner's prayer. But there's something I want you to remember. And there's something I want you to to remember. I said I would be happy to do the prayer after my story. Oh, right. 
Faz's ex-girlfriend Charity met a star football player named Jason. They married, had two kids, set off for Peru to become missionaries for 12 years. Cool. Not for Faz. See, he never got over her. Then one day, Charity showed up at church. Faz, is that you? Yeah. You got a beard now. Looks good on you. Really? You think so? Oh, hold up. Honey, come here. I want you to meet a good friend of mine. Jason, meet Foz. Foz? That's a unique name. Yeah, thanks. Jason and I just moved back here. Really? Yeah, we were looking forward to... Oh, sorry. Looks like they're ready. Meeting time. Good to meet you, Foz. Likewise. We haven't told many people yet, but the elders are meeting with Jason right now, apparently. He's gonna be the new pastor. Oh, great. Yeah. Um, Charity? Yeah? Did I do okay today? You hardly said a word since we left church. Oh, Jason, I'm sorry. You did great. I mean, look at their response. All those people coming forward to the altar. Charity, what's wrong? Jason, I... I don't think I'm saved. What? Of course you're saved. I've been empty for years. Look, I know you've had some dry spells, but that doesn't mean you aren't saved. Sometimes our love for God can grow cold at times. Honey, we were missionaries for 12 years. You led people to Jesus. That doesn't make me a Christian. Okay, let's start with the basics. You told me when you were seven years old, you... You went forward and prayed the sinner's prayer, right? I did. There was this old lady who asked if I wanted to receive Jesus, and I thought, why not? So, you're good. No, I'm not good. I realize now, from your sermon, I never actually repented. I never acknowledged my sin. I never really trusted in Christ. I just regurgitated a prayer. I was a good kid, sure, hung around Christian friends, did all the Christian stuff, but I never had a hunger for God's word. And I realize now, I've never had a power to overcome sin. I just tried to buckle down and do good. Like, take her, for instance. Who? That woman right there, on the corner, I've seen her a few times. Yeah, I think she's a... Uh... A prostitute. And it just hit me. Here I am, looking all church pretty, but I'm no better than she is. You can see her sin, but I wear a long skirt, dress modestly, and nobody knows. Wow. I realize now, when I was seven, I just mouthed the words. My heart never changed. I didn't really know what it meant, and someday... When my life is over... Charity, come on. Someday when my life is over and I stand before God, what will I say? I certainly don't want to hear those... those fateful seven words. What words? Words that I even quoted to people. Matthew 7, 23. I never knew you. Depart from me. I don't know what to say. You're not going to disown me, will you? Of course not. And I take back what I said. I do know what to say. Charity, you need to have an honest talk with God. Yeah. The kids need help with their homework tonight. I'll take care of the kids. Thank you. I'm here. Alone. So alone. I need you, God. I need you. I'm a sinner. I need you, Jesus, to be my Lord, to save me from my sin, from the consequences of my sin. I don't just want to repeat a prayer. I truly repent from my heart. I'm so sorry for my sin. I want to live for you, less of me, more of you. And now I realize I'm not really alone at all. Jesus, you are right here with me. I know you rose from the dead. Jesus, be my Lord. And this time, it was real. 
That's why I'm standing before you today, telling you my story, because I don't want any of you to miss this. If you truly want Jesus to be Lord of your life, if you're truly ready to repent from your sins and turn your life over to him, come forward to the altar here. Let's talk, because if you're ready to walk with him, we're ready to walk with you. No more going through the motions, no more religious exercise. It's time to get real. That Sunday, several people came forward in genuine repentance. That's remarkable, but also scary. I get it. One more. Faz's best friend growing up was Garrett. Garrett grew up on the streets, but Faz could see Garrett had a lot of potential. When Garrett got into trouble with drugs, Faz had invited him to church. Finally, when Garrett was 28 years old, he prayed the sinner's prayer. Got married soon after. Three kids. Joined the worship band. Playing bass guitar, all good. Praise God. Sounds good. On the outside. But see, three weeks after he turned 31, Garrett got the worst news of his life. We'll hear what that news was in just a moment. But first, I want to share a bit about how our supporting ministry has an impact all over the world. Unshackled is spreading the good news through powerful stories about real people. Our success is a result of God's blessing and the involvement of supporters like you. When you contribute to Unshackled, it has a direct impact. Your support allows us to hire quality writers, talented actors, a skilled production team, and a devoted staff. Through your support, we are able to share Unshackled worldwide. So, in order to continue the work of spreading the gospel and allowing us to offer this program for free, won't you consider making a donation to Unshackled? It's really quite easy. All you need to do is click on the live link, if there is one where you're listening, or visit our podcast website at unshackledpodcast.org and then click the donate button. Or you can always write a check to Unshackled and mail it to 1458 South Canal Street, Chicago, Illinois, 60607. Hey, Foz. <clears throat> Things are coming over so fast. Of course. You sounded awful on the phone, Garrett. Well, come in. Please have a seat. You'll need it. You not only sound awful... Foz. I had some strange stuff going on. <clears throat> like this weird pain in my stomach stretched around to my back. I remember how you said it was good I was finally losing weight? Yeah. It wasn't good. Not this time. <clears throat> Foz, I have pancreatic cancer. Stage four. My doctor says I have six weeks. Maybe more. Maybe less. Oh, Garrett. <sighs> Brother, I, I can't believe this. Something else I need to tell you. Even worse. Worse? I need help. What do you need? Foz, I've been having... <sighs> I've been having an affair for the last three years. This is hitting me pretty hard all at once here. I get it. I knew something was wrong between you and Joanne. I kept trying to come clean. I kept crying out to God, help me, help me. I tried books, sermons, seminars. I'd break free for a while, but I kept falling back into it again and again. You talked to Pastor Jason about this? You're the first person I've told. Thank you for your trust. This is going to destroy Joanne. Foss, I'm going to hell. Garrett, don't worry. You're not going to hell. I mean, this is really bad news. But hey, I'm here for you. You know that. You don't understand. I've never felt so far away from God. You know you gotta come clean. You gotta tell Joanne. Yeah. How is she taking the news about the cancer? It's weird. We've drifted apart the last three years. Like, far apart. She's been wanting a divorce. Still, I thought she'd have a little more sympathy. Sweet Joanne? Used to be. I think she knows in her heart what's been going on. When she was little, her dad ran off with his secretary. Split the family apart. A lot of resentment there. You gotta tell her, Garrett. Yeah. Garrett didn't waste any time. 
he talked to Joanne that very night. Sit down for what? There's something I need to tell you. I have something to tell you first, Garrett. Okay. When you told me you had cancer, it was just a lot of news to take in all at once. There's no getting around this. I didn't handle it well. I'm sorry, Garrett. I need to ask you, will you please forgive me? Honey, of course. Of course I forgive you. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay, so you said there was something you need to tell me? Yes. About that. It's hard to, um... <sighs> Joanne, I've... I've been unfaithful to you. Joanne? Give me a moment, please. I slipped. I just slipped into sin. I've... I've lived a, a double life this whole time. And no one knew. No, Garrett. I've known. For a long time. I couldn't prove it. I just... knew. Kim? Yes. I can't believe I'm about to do this. But I'm going to. Honey, oh, your forgiveness means the world to me. I'm the most blessed man in the world to be married. Please, stop. A year ago, I made a promise to myself. I don't understand. I promised that if I ever had proof of what was going on, I would take action immediately. Unlike my mother, she turned her head the other way. She never faced reality, and it ended up destroying her. I vowed that would never happen to me. What are you saying? I'm saying you need to pack your things, Garrett. I want you out of my house in 24 hours. Your house? This is our house! Garrett, don't even start. And don't try pulling the C card for sympathy. You don't get a free pass for breaking up our marriage. Breaking our family. Breaking me. Honey. Our conversation has ended. That night, Garrett packed up what he could and left. Devastating. Oh, he was beyond devastated. He went downhill fast. It wasn't long before he was back on the streets where he grew up. Back to drugs. Files finally found him in a dirty tent tucked under a bridge. Garrett? What are you doing? You don't belong here. It's exactly what I deserve. So do I. But God have mercy on me. Well, God turned away from me. I don't blame him. Look at me, Garrett. God loves you. Right now, right where you are, right as you are. Prove it. God proves his love for us in this. While we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Romans 5.8 I'm going to hell. That's what I deserve. That's what we all deserve. But God so loved us, you and me. He sent Jesus to us. When you believe in him, you will have eternal life. I already did that. But something's not right, Foz. You said a prayer with your mouth. But what about your heart? Here, let's see what my Bible says. Romans 10, 9 and 10. That if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and shalt believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confesseth Confession is made unto salvation. When you prayed the sinner's prayer, did you really believe in your heart? Did you really repent of your sins? Did you then trust in Jesus as Lord, believe in him as Savior, and begin the process of a new life? I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. I'm, I'm such a sinner. Father, pray with me. Pray with me. Files knew Garrett was ready, not just to repeat a prayer, but to repent, genuinely repent and believe. Jesus said to go make disciples of all nations. Exactly. So Files spent the next four weeks of Garrett's life helping him in his walk with Jesus. Garrett refused to go back to the hospital, 
So Foz was right next to his friend the day he died. Right here. In this very tent. And now, at this very moment, my best friend is in heaven. Grady Foster. You're Foz. You're quicker than you look. Now I'd like to go back to my nap, if you don't mind. Hey, what are you doing here? You're obviously not on drugs or- The more time I spent with Garrett, the more God gave me a heart for the homeless. I decided the very best way to minister to them was to live amongst them. Nothing against your ministry. God's given you a different assignment. But I'm gonna challenge you. As you leave, look around you. These are your future brothers and sisters, if you take time to truly listen. Don't just make them parrot a prayer. Make sure they understand the consequence of sin. Make sure they genuinely repent. Make sure they understand what it means to trust in Christ as Lord. Make sure that they know that there is fruit that is born out of God's Holy Spirit changing us. And then walk with them down the road a bit. You'll know them by their fruit. All those people, all those I've, quote, led to the Lord. Not all are lost. There are those who repented and are walking it out. Grady, thank you. Still want me to pray the sinner's prayer? That won't be necessary. Jesus didn't do the prayer. The apostles didn't do the prayer. But Jesus and the apostles did repeat this one word, repent. Nothing wrong with the prayer itself, you understand, but that's not what saves you. It's what's going on in your heart. Truly repent from your sins and call on Jesus as your Lord. Thank you, Grady. Love them, Jack. Love them to God. Don't be so eager to make the sale that you miss their heart. Genuine repentance. Grady, hmm? can you, will you pray for me? Yep. All right, then. Every head bowed, every eye closed. Uh, stop right there. I'm sorry? Are those words in the Bible? Every head bowed, every eye closed? No. Nothing wrong with bowing your head or closing your eyes. Just be aware. Don't just parrot others. Listen for the Holy Spirit. He'll teach you what to say and when to say it with genuine love for that person in front of you. Father God, help my friend Jack here. He's got a good heart and he wants to serve you. We've got a great harvest waiting for us. Show us how to reap for your kingdom. We love you and we pray in the name of Jesus. Amen. Thank you, Crady. You can go now. Okay. <laughs> Go now and make disciples, like Jesus told us. Because when each of us does our part, we end up discipling nations. <laughs> Farewell. Farewell. Excuse me, sir. Huh? What's your name, sir? Hank. Do you have a moment? I'd like to hear your story. And... I have a story to share as well. You first. Listening friend, if you've repeated the sinner's prayer without genuine repentance from sins and belief in Christ as Lord, it's time to get serious. The well-known pastor, A.W. Tozer, once said, it is my opinion that tens of thousands, if not millions, have been brought into some kind of religious experience by accepting Christ, and they have not been saved. Friend, if you're ready to make a true change in your life with Jesus as your Lord and experience the fruits of a changed life by the sanctifying work of the Holy Spirit, we encourage you to call 1-888-NEED-HIM or you can get in touch with us here at Pacific Garden Mission, 1458 South Canal Street, Chicago, Illinois, 60607. The telephone number in Chicago, 312-492-9410.
Our email address is unshackled at pgm.org. Visit our website to learn more about this ministry, unshackled.org. Did you know we've created even more quality Christian content for you, our listener? It's true. We're now producing an exciting children's show called The Clue Crew. This is a family-friendly adventure series where there's always a biblical lesson to be learned and a mystery to be solved. If you'd like to hear this program in your area, we encourage you to reach out to your station manager and ask them to bring you The Clue Crew. This is program number 3,823. Heard in this special story, The Sinner's Prayer, were Ed Dizzalo, Michael Myers, Patrick Thompson, Ryan Priester, Alana Arenas, Michael Torrey, and Larissa Julianas. Original music, Don Bador. Sound effects, Patrick Thompson. Audio engineer, David Pierczynski. Script, John Fornoff. Unshackled is produced by Pacific Garden Mission to show through true stories that if your life is empty, it can be filled to overflowing. Please write today or reach out to us on social media. Connecting with you means a great deal to us. You can find us on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and YouTube at Unshackled PGM. And our address, Pacific Garden Mission, 1458 South Canal Street, Chicago, Illinois, 60607. So until next time, unless our Lord returns before then, I'm Timothy Gregory reminding you that the doors to Pacific Garden Mission are open night and day. Thanks for listening.